the Talk to Our Man, Teddy Kegstad, and folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN. You can sign up for the Tiger Forex Report right now while we talk to our man, Teddy Kegstad. It's $97 for the month, folks. He's got a new issue out every Monday with updates throughout the week when warranted. You gain access to the webinar tonight. It's a 60-minute webinar. We're going to talk about it right now. That will be archived. If you can't attend tonight, it's usually archived by tomorrow morning. You can check that out when you like. And he's also got another webinar up there that he just did in October. You gain access to that as well, talking about the strategies and fundamentals. There's an instance of what you're looking at, what is behind the Tiger Forex support. So you gain access to that archive. You get access to the newsletter. You gain access to the live webinar tonight. Can't go wrong, folks. And boy, we got quite a market for it. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, why, why don't we start off a little bit about the webinar, Teddy, man, what you're going to be talking about for subscribers. We got quite a day, man. These markets, they're rocking the dollar index. Um, pretty dramatic moves in both directions recently. Um, what are you going to be talking about to subscribers tonight at 4 o'clock for the Tiger Forex report? Uh, well, today, especially with the inflation number in, for the uh, UK, that plays into a lot of what we're going to be talking about in the webinar. One of the topics is going to be the central banks, um, what their forecast is for them moving forward over the next quarter, next three to four months or so, and also a lot of the uh, geopolitical things that are coming into play also, a little nice. bit about the BRICS and stuff like that as well. Nice. So, uh, yeah, we have a great day for the webinar, especially with the way the markets are reacting off of the, uh, the news for, that came out from the UK today. It's pretty awesome, and I know we talk to you every Wednesday. It seems like Wednesday is a great day to talk to you, man, whether we're getting Fed Day, whether we're getting inflation data, whatever it is. Um, we got markets moving for sure. Where do you want to kick things off in terms of taking a look, man? We got some action in crude. We got yields. We got dollar. Where do you want to start things off as we jump around? Uh, well, there, you know what? There's a lot of cool things to talk about. With crude, I think, you know, we've had this big pop. you got a big gap in the oil market. You know, typically there's an old trader adage that all gaps get filled. doesn't mean it's going to get filled anytime soon. Maybe not. But I think that's kind of what we're working on right now is there was a – remember when crude first exploded when the OPEC did their, uh, you know – basically put in the floor at 75. You know, this is something that, you know, the markets always react very quickly on news like this. I think it was a little overdone, you know, for one. So I think you're going to probably see the market try and hold back around these upper 70s for a little bit, you know, for as far as oil is concerned. Uh, when it comes to uh, the Treasury bond market, that's something that's getting very interesting because we've had a nice pullback in that. Uh, today, the uh, bonds are down a little bit. Uh, yields are up. This is helping to keep the dollar a little bit strong versus some currencies. And, you know, it's kind of funny with the reaction off of the U.K., as far as Europe, you know, you have a mixed bag of goods. You got the euro US dollar that's down, you have the pound that's up, you know, you have the uh, US dollar uh, Swiss, which is up today, you know. So there's a lot of divergence going on as far as many of the currencies, which is something that we've been talking about for a while. And I think that that really plays into a lot of these factors that, you know, are driving these markets and these trends that, you know, I've been talking about how the dollar index is, it's always a good gauge overall for many currencies. It's a lot of times it'll bask at all of them, you know, but now we have such divergence that, you know, you have to use the dollar index accordingly, you know, and I think it has more to do with the euro and a couple other currencies than it does, for instance, say like with the U.S. dollar Swiss, you know, and also uh, some of the other lesser major pairs. Like, for instance, you have the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar, both which have come into basically a sideways trade with everything that's going on right now. And I think you're going to see that that's going to that's going to remain. And that's one of the reasons why you're not getting the the, the overall true true trends in the Dixie right now, you know, and that's something that I think is going to remain for the next uh, few three, four months ahead, at least, you know, and this it, with especially what's going on with Europe, you know, you have uh, the, there's there's divergence in Europe. You know, you have Swiss strength and you have weakness in the pound and the euro. Uh, today, you're getting a knee jerk reaction in the pound because, you know, obviously the Bank of England is going to be aggressively trying to fight inflation by raising rates. But at the same token, they're also buying our treasury bonds. <laughs> so, you know, to shore up the banking market. So they're in a bit of a dilemma there. So I wouldn't expect a lot, a very big move, especially with bullish strength. And the pound, I think you guys got to watch. We had a sell signal in the pound last week which coincided with the dollar index you know when you have 
multiple markets that have signals that go in tandem, you, you really got to look at those inflection points. So meaning like that the, the, the move that was set off of Friday's high or low, depending on which currency pair you're talking about, uh, how that reacts and if that is establishing a true trend, we're going to find that validation over the next few sessions. Um, like, I don't know if you have a, a pound uh, dollar chart to look at, but yeah, if I was you just look looking at, at it. Yep. Okay. So last Friday, you had a bearish engulfing line sell signal. The market went down on Monday and then Tuesday and today we have it higher, especially because of the reaction to what's going on with the inflation numbers. So the high from Friday is key. So not only does that sell signal remain intact, if that high stays intact, meaning that we probably have a good chance of seeing the pound get down to the dollar twenty-three, dollar twenty-two level. And if it does so, it's not just that sell signal that uh, is reinforced. Then you have a head and shoulders because if you look at the chart right now. Friday's high was like the head and we came back down and now we're making another shoulder. So if, if the pound takes out the high, well, obviously the head and shoulders does not happen. OK, and that means we know that 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 is a good breach level for pressing through resistance. So I'd be very careful if you're short. Don't try and fight that move above those highs and may only just nice. take out the high by a little bit. It could also be an explosion point. You know, when the pound gets volatile, you know, it doesn't move like 20, 30, 40 ticks. It moves like three bucks, you know. So, I mean, that's something you have to really take into account. And the same is also to the downside. So if you take the uh, the low from Monday and then you take the low from like, I think it's like, what is it, last Tuesday or something like that? You draw yep. a neckline there. There's your head and shoulders pattern to watch out for. So that's nice. not much of a break, you know. And if we can take that out over the next couple of sessions, especially going into the weekend, well, then I think you're going to have a nice corrective move where you can see that pound definitely get back down probably to that one dollar twenty three dollar twenty two area nice and w what do you think um just going a little bit big picture and that's great analysis man i love how you break down each individual pairing because i mean i myself even i get caught up in the dollar index and i love how you break down the influence you know of the different currencies right now and how there is just divergence across the board when we jump through each chart man it's pretty staggering uh what do you think of just the general conversation teddy about you know we're probably approaching the area that we're going to pause on the Fed, whether it's one more hike, maybe it's two, maybe it's three, right? I mean, I don't think they're going to have to go to seven or eight percent. So we're probably approaching it. And meanwhile, we have inflation heating up overseas, potentially, at least they got to beat today, and that those central banks are still going to be facing some heat there. I, I asked that in particular because we got the dollar index, man. It's been quite a pullback from mm -hmm. 115. Do you think the market's gotten even ahead of that move? Because we're almost back to when the Fed started hiking, which is just remarkable when you think mm -hmm. that we're back to where we were when we started hiking. Meanwhile, we're still hiking. Um, what do you think of that kind of conversation? I'm trying to do that in my own head, saying, you know, is the market already ahead or, or could the dollar be facing a lot of weakness if we start to pause and then you still have, you know, Europe? And I know I'm bringing it back to the dollar and you've told us <laughs> that there's divergences. But what do you think of that kind of conversation? It, it, I just I would love to hear what you have to say about that one. I think the consensus is ahead of themselves, and I'd be very, very cautious on trading off of that kind of information. I personally think the Fed's going to be raising quarter points for the rest of the year, most likely, especially with the okay. unless there's some, unless there's a major shift where the inflation starts to really sure. drop globally, you know. And I don't see that happening, you know. Yeah. So, well, Teddy, um, I appreciate it. We'll leave it there because I know you got okay. a lot to talk about tonight as well at four o'clock, folks. Please check it out. Teddy, thanks for the time, man. And I'm going to be in there as well. I look forward to it at 4 o'clock, man. good stuff tonight, Tommy. It's awesome. Really thanks show. so much. Folks, check it out right on the front page. You can sign up during this break. You're not going to want to miss tonight. We'll be right back.